Simon, why would you choose a mortgage advisor when you can go to the bank direct? Yeah, I think that's a really good question, Glennon, and I think it's probably on the forefront of a lot of people's minds. Wealth HQ, empowering you to take charge of your financial life. We welcome back Simon McDonald. He's an experienced advisor at Mortgage HQ with more than 10 years extensive knowledge in property investing. Simon's strong attention to detail was nurtured in the New Zealand Army where he served as a Lance Corporal for five years. Today, he's going to give us some insider tips for anyone looking to buy a property. Simon, why would you choose a mortgage advisor when you can go to the bank direct? Yeah, I think that's a really good question, Blannon, and I think it's probably on the forefront of a lot of people's minds uh, when they're choosing to do this for the first time. And the simple answer is, uh, if you were going to choose to do something on your own or with a team of experts, you'd probably choose to go with a team of experts. You just have so much more leverage. And here at Mortgage HQ and Wealth HQ, we have the capacity to be able to provide those expertise with a team of experts that work with you. We're not interested in just getting you across the line to get you that mortgage, which any bank can probably do if you're in a really good position, right? What we'll be able to provide is much more targeted advice on the how you structure the mortgage, how ways you can uh, effectively review this over long periods of time to develop your vision. Your first home may not be your only home, and so how does that fit within the model? How do we look at reducing debt? How do we look at reducing risk? How do we do that through coverage and diversification? So here at Mortgage HQ and working with myself and the team, you'll be working with uh, experts from all those three different angles. So to get all of these experts, does it cost extra money? No, no. We, we don't actually charge a cent for our clients. And this is one of the great things that I loved when I first entered this industry. I couldn't believe it that you get all this value for nothing. And the reason for that is because the providers pay the company a commission when we do great work for our clients. And the advisors here at Mortgage HQ get, are based on a salary, and they, they get a bonus for how well they, they uh, do as well. So when it comes to first home buyers, can you only buy a home if you have a 20% deposit? No, no, that's not right. Uh, there's many options. It ranges, essentially, from all the way below and 5% all the way through to 20%. But there's a lot to it, right? And so speaking to the advisor, you're going to get the option to understand the differences between those deposit ranges. If you were at a lower range, it comes with implications. And discussing those and understanding them before you make a decision is going to make all the difference. They talk about how if you have less than 20% deposit, usually there might be a fee. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? How does that work? Yeah, uh, you're you're getting into the detail there, Blannon, and I think... uh, the it differs depending on the bank you're you're targeting, right? And it differs based on the position the client's in. If the client's in a really uh, good income position, then they may have a little bit more options as to what lender they they can go with. But in short, uh, if you're staying with main bank and you're looking to get a low deposit loan, in some cases it will come with a fee. In some cases it will come with higher interest rates. In some cases it will come with slightly higher interest rates. And a fee. And so doing all those calculations, figuring out which one's the best for you is the way to go. Simon, can you tell me about how a mortgage advisor can help a client get a better interest rate? Yeah, it's a good good question. I would say in most cases, uh, people are able to obtain better interest rates by refinancing. Now, um, in a lot of cases, there'll be a negotiation with the advisor and their existing bank to try and retain them at that at that lender. And so that work will will go forward with any refinance application. But if you're looking to do a restructure or refinance, you need to understand that although we may guess you get you the best rates, we may not necessarily be able to get you better rates. But there's a lot of value to be had from working with an advisor outside of just those rates, right? For example, we, t- we touched on this earlier. What are the longer term plans? How can we structure the mortgage so that you're paying it down as fast as possible? These can actually uh, accumulate way more than small percentage or point something off a percentage rate. 
you always have something to say about the markets. How do you keep yourself updated to the latest mortgage trends? The latest mortgage trends? I am in a privileged position to be uh, with very highly educated people who read a lot, who um, you know read all the news bulletins, who read books on a daily, um, yourself and Andrew. Uh, I know Andrew probably reads a book a day at this point. Um, shares his insights from these books on the regular. We have a Slack message, so I get a lot from that. I also get a lot from the communities that I I work with and and um, share my thoughts with online. Uh, and then additionally, just through my my traditional uh, news networks. Can you share a success story where your advice benefited the client? Yeah, that's uh, I, I like that question because it uh, it uh, drills at home for me as to why I'm an advisor. Uh, I think the one that comes to light uh, the best for me is um, ones I've done uh, for a dear friend of mine. I won't name them, don't worry. Uh, But um, it it worked out very well because he was in a very high-stress environment, right? He uh, was going through a breakup and was needing some detailed advice about how he might go about Uh, structuring the mortgage and also the possible buyout what those numbers look like when he if he was going to purchase the the property that he was living in currently or if he was going to sell that to the partner and move on to the to the next property and the information that was fed through him through to him on a timely manner allowed him to make the decisions uh, essentially with confidence and so in this particular reason, it wasn't specifically the structure that we focused on, although we did a great job at doing that. Um, it was specifically the information that we had available to us as financial advisors to guide people through that process that really helped him. When it comes to first home buyers getting their first mortgage, what are the most common mistakes? I think the biggest common mistake I find for first home buyers is not having enough reserve and not having a, a really good expectation on what that first buying experience is going to be. For example, if someone's really pushing the boundaries and wanting to get in to purchase their first home, they have a 5 or 10 or 15% deposit, and they just don't have enough cash lying around, liquid cash, to pay for the likes of a limb report, a builder, a uh, lawyer, these are real costs. So when they come to us at Mortgage HQ and Wealth HQ, we not only focus on the fact that we're going to say, hey, look, here's a mortgage and you can go, go ahead with it, but describe to them in detail what those costs are going to be so that they understand what the process is going to be like. Um, that way they can, again, move forward with confidence in these, in these uh, decision making. I remember when I was getting my first home, it took me 10 auctions. And so when I think about that, Working with a financial advisor, and I did at the time, there is so much work that goes into it. To, to shed some light on this, right, we are doing a lot of reworking of applications every time someone goes to an auction and doesn't go through with it. I'll tell you why. Because when you go to an auction, you have to be unconditional. When you, when you make a bid at auction, that's it. You're buying the house, Right. And so there's so many things that need to be lined up for the bank to be happy with the security, for the lawyer to be happy with the security, right? For all all the numbers to make sense. So every time I get a client like yourself who wants to go to five or so um, plus uh, uh, auctions, uh, I uh, am very happy when I get them across the line, I'll tell you that. (laughs) When it comes to credit card, how does it impact lending? That's a good question. It's actually changed recently. Mm -hmm. There's one lender that I know of and one that's talking about it where they're going to, if you maintain a credit card limit and pay it off uh, every month, that it's not going to negatively affect you. Wow. Yeah. So that's quite new. But um, normally the way to look at it is it's about threefold. So if you've got a credit card limit of about 10,000, then you're probably going to have a reduced limit of your borrowing capacity about 30,000. Why 30,000? 30,000 is a blunt, blunt round, round figure, and it changes depending on how much lending you really have, right? 
and so it it does it will have a, a varying effect. Um, someone who's got millions of dollars worth of debt and a ten thousand dollar credit card, uh, it's going to be different to someone who's buying their first home and and got a credit card. So um, in short, you know, uh, the reason why it matters is because you know that you've got a lever to pull here. So some people think, you know, I've got this credit card and I paid off every month, so it's not going to affect me. But by speaking to us and understanding how it all works, you can be a little bit flexible about how you maintain that credit card. Simon, you may already have a mortgage. When is the right time to refinance? Uh, I think that is a complex question and it and means that uh, you really have to understand the person's position, right? I don't want to say like blanket kind of statements, but there are some rules of thumb that, that you go by. One of the things is like, for example, if you've got lots of your lending fixed in for long periods of time and there's large break fees and there's possibly a cash contribution fee that you need to consider, it's important that those numbers are taken into consideration before you make the jump to refinance. So again, working with the, re- the, the mortgage broker and the team at Mortgage HQ, you're going to have the capacity for the team to deliver this to you in a broken down spreadsheet so that you have a, a good understanding of what those costs are going to be and what the upside will be. So um, in short, there's always a variety of different reasons why you may refinance. And in a lot of cases, it might not might not be just because of some banks giving you a better pricing or a better cashback. There's a whole heap of things that you can consider. In your opinion, is there a massive difference between a first home buyer's mortgage process versus a seasoned investor? Absolutely. Yeah. So there's a lot more um, education that's required on, on the front end for first home buyers. We want to make sure that they're comfortable with the process. A seasoned buyer might bring me a contract that he's, he's already signed up to, right? Before we even discuss the finance. So, um, and in a lot of cases, they've got that confidence because they've got me in the si- sidelines. I know their information that's in the system, and they come to me and say, hey, look, if we got this kind of yield, what would be the approximate amount? And I'd say the up, upper echelons is around here, and they go around looking for something lower than that at that same yield. And they come back with a offer under contract, and those are the ones I love because it's so quick, right? Like, they know what they're doing because they're working closely with an advisor. They get something under contract and the, and the whole uh, whole process is smooth. If there was one piece of advice that you can give to anyone who's getting a mortgage advisor, what would that be? It would be learn who you're working with. I personally would like to work with someone that has been there and done that. I also want to make sure that they're working with a wider team because not everyone can do everything by themselves. You know, when I'm sleeping, I have people helping me out. Really, truly. <laughs> and when I, well, we, we, we have outsourced a lot of our, right. our work. Well, we've got some virtual assistants overseas. So we're practically working around the clock. I thought you were bullying the interns. <laughs> no, nothing like that <laughs> yet. No, no. I think, um, no, that they we, we do have some flexible flexible hours and and people do work more in the morning and some more in the evening um some people work you know 12 13 hours but um we also have people around the world who are assisting so what i mean by this is if you've got something really urgent that's coming in and i'm off taking my daughter to a dance class or whatever um then i've got someone here who um you know i uh, i trust completely to ensure that that is handled correctly so a good team, and someone with experience who's been there and done that. Wealth HQ, empowering you to take charge of your financial life.